Hi, thank you for joining me today to talk about the impact of maternal COVID-19 infection on birth outcomes. I'm Samantha Picos, a postdoc in the Hood Price Lab at the Institute for Systems Biology. What has become apparent is that over the course of the pandemic is that um, pregnant women that have COVID-19 are at greater risk for severe illness. This includes increased risk for ICU admission, mechanical ventilation, even death compared to uh, people in the population that are not pregnant at a time of COVID-19 infection. Despite this, pregnant people remain largely unvaccinated. Only 34.8% of pregnant people were vaccinated as of December 4th of 2021. So they remain a vulnerable population. Um, what we were able to do is in collaboration with the uh, Providence St. Joseph healthcare system, we used electronic healthcare records to look at the impact of COVID-19 infection on uh, maternal fetal outcomes. And what we were able to do is identify um, almost uh, 1.25 million people that had a COVID-19 test um, as of February 14th of 2021. And we had almost 74,000 women that delivered between March 5th of 2020 and July 4th of 2021. Um, of those 24,000 people had both a COVID-19 test and delivered. And we narrowed this down to 18,335 women that had a COVID-19 test during pregnancy and reached 140 days or 20 weeks of gestation prior to delivery. Um, of those, 882 people tested positive, and we were able to break this down into trimester of infection. And then we had 17,453 people that had at least one negative COVID-19 test during pregnancy and no positive tests. And we were able to match these uh, people without COVID-19 to our uh, cohort with COVID-19 on a number of covariates so that they uh, better reflected uh, population demographics and birth characteristics. Um, so what this looks like is we included uh, people with tests administered between March 5th of 2020 and February 14th of 2021. And any people that also delivered between March 5th of 2020 and July 4th of 2021. Um, in this way, we identified 882 uh, people with a COVID-19 test during pregnancy, 85 were during the first trimester, 226 during the second trimester, 571 during the third trimester for a total of 882 people with COVID-19 during pregnancy. There were 17,453 that had a negative COVID-19 test during pregnancy and no positive tests. And when we matched on a number of demographic and birth characteristics, um, we have a match control cohort of 889 without COVID-19. Uh, the reason why we had to do this matching is uh, pregnant people with COVID-19 uh, were different on a number of factors than people that did not have COVID-19 during pregnancy. People with COVID-19, uh, during pregnancy were more likely to be a minority, Hispanic, have Medicaid insurance, be younger with lower educational attainment, have higher parity and gravidity, so a higher number of pregnancies that delivered or total number of pregnancies, um, have a history of preterm birth, uh, were more likely to deliver vaginally and have a male fetus. All of these uh, factors are known to impact birth outcomes. So in order to be more confident that the effects that we were seeing were due to the COVID-19 infection and not due to enriching for a population um, that is associated with these outcomes due to who was getting infected with COVID-19. We, we controlled for these variables using propensity score matching. So after uh, we performed this matching in our match control cohort, uh, all of the differences between these populations go away. And there was no significant difference between our positive COVID-19 cohort and those in the match negative control. Um, then we wanted to look at uh, preterm birth um, in the COVID-19 cohort. So in pink, we have a first trimester infection. Blue is a second trimester infection. 
three, green is the third trimester, and uh, gold is our matched negative control cohort. As you can see, um, there is an increased risk for uh, premature delivery um, in the COVID-19 uh, population. Um, and this is largely driven by a first or second trimester infection. And we also considered small for gestational age, looking at uh, babies that were in the bottom 10th fetal growth percentile at delivery and birth weight as well. And what we're seeing is that there is um, a lower birth, significantly lower birth weight in the first trimester and third trimester infections um, compared to our match negative control. And there's also um, that these babies that were born to a woman that had a COVID-19 infection during pregnancy were significantly more likely to be small for gestational age. And this is largely driven by a third trimester infection here in green. Um, we also observed increased risk for, for stillbirth um, following a COVID-19 infection. So what we're seeing is um, overall, there's increased risk for stillbirth. Um, we saw seven total in the uh, COVID-19 um, in, infected uh, pregnant population compared to one in our match negative control. Five of those were during the second trimester, one during the first trimester. So these, these uh, increase in stillbirth was largely driven by first or second trimester infection. Um, we also wanted to look a, more in depth at what's going on with gestational age at delivery following maternal COVID-19 infection. So we have a number of demographic comorbidity um, information about the SARS-CoV-2 infection, including the WHO max COVID-19 severity index and the gestational age at maternal SARS-CoV-2 infection as well as fetal characteristics. And we looked at all of these individual variables on a single uh, univariate analysis, uh, correlating these variables with gestational age at delivery. And there was a number that were, were, uh, were in fact correlated with uh, gestational age at delivery following SARS-CoV-2 infection. Um, we additionally performed a multivariate analysis using machine learning. So we took all 24 of these factors and use them to build a model that predicted gestational age at delivery. What we're looking here is the highest performing model that had 58% accuracy at predicting gestational age at delivery within a week following a SARS-CoV-2 infection. And then we wanted to ask, what is driving this model? Which features were the most important? So what we're looking here as feature importance, um, each row is a feature in the model each uh, dot is an individual patient. And we're looking at the, uh, the color of the dot is uh, the value, uh, whether it's high, which is red or low and blue for that individual patient for that feature. Here is the midline. And uh, the distance from the midline is the SHAP value. So that tells us how much that feature for that particular a uh, person is contributing to the predicted gestational age at delivery. And this is uh, calculated by, by permutation. And what we're seeing is the most important feature is gestational age at maternal SARS-CoV-2 infection with um, people with earlier gestational age at SARS-CoV-2 infection having earlier gestational age at delivery. Um, we also wanted to just look at the straightforward correlation of gestational age at delivery. So that's the um, x-axis in all of these graphs compared to a number of these features, such as gestational age at uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection. And as we could see, these are correlated. Um, there are a number of uh, people that are more closely following the trend line and a second population in which the gestational age at infection doesn't appear to influence the gestational age at delivery. Um, we also looked at uh, unique medication active ingredient count. So these are the number of um, medication active ingredients 
that the patient received following SARS-CoV-2 infection and prior to delivery. Um, this was the second most important feature in our model. And what we're seeing is that there uh, is a correlation of uh, people that received a higher number of active ingredients tended to deliver earlier. But when we looked at the COVID-19 severity, so this is based off of the WHO COVID-19 um, severity chart that's largely driven by uh, respiratory outcomes in patients. Um, we're seeing that most of our patients had mild or moderate infections. They tended to be uh, two, three, or four on the scale. And uh, there was no correlation between gestational age at delivery and uh, max COVID-19 severity score. And finally, um, looking at the number of COVID-19 encounters. So this is the number of times the patient engaged with the healthcare system following COVID-19 infection prior to delivery. Um, we're seeing no correlation there between the two. Um, so overall, what I showed you uh, here today is that we see an increased risk of preterm birth and stillbirth following COVID-19 infection. And that this is largely driven by first and second trimester infections. There is an increased risk for small for gestational age and low birth weight following COVID-19 infection that's largely driven by third trimester infection. Um, and so this is important to note because it, uh, the gestational timing matters in terms of the outcomes that we should be concerned about. Um, and then uh, we also see that earlier gestational age and infection is correlated with earlier gestational age of delivery and that this was the most important feature in uh, predicting gestational age at delivery. Um, and then finally, severity of COVID-19 infection is uncorrelated with gestational age at delivery. So this means that any woman with a COVID-19 infection during pregnancy um, should be, uh, it, we should probably promote increased prenatal monitoring and engagement because they are at increased risk for these negative birth outcomes. Um, and in addition, this just is another piece of evidence to uh, promote that uh, pregnant people can benefit from vaccination. Um, going forward, uh, we have this whole system set up uh, to investigate COVID-19 impact on pregnancy outcomes. We can use this to respond quickly to the changing pandemic. So this can involve um, looking at Delta variants in COVID-19 infection on maternal fetal outcomes to see if they um, are uh, more severe compared to previous variants, as well as investigating the, the effectiveness of vaccines on preventing COVID-19 infection during pregnancy and their impacts on birth outcomes. And finally, like evaluating treatments for COVID-19 in pregnant people, including the use of anticoagulation medication during an active COVID-19 infection and how that impacts maternal fetal outcomes. Um, this was a uh, group effort. I want to thank members of the Hood Price Lab and this, in, in addition, uh, Jennifer Hadlock, has been a major collaborator on this. Um, so I wanted to thank her and the members of her lab, as well as um, Tanya Swanson from Providence, uh, Parquette, uh, Allison Parquette um, for her advice, and uh, Ching Dai from the Health Data Science Group at ISV. Also want to thank the NIH and ISB for funding. Thank you.